In the last lesson, we talked about stalls, but what would happen if we stalled the aircraft and the tail of the airplane wasn't aligned with the airplane's direction of travel? Uh, potentially, I think they go into a spin. Oh my goodness! Don't be sad, guys. We didn't actually die in this video. It was all done through the magic of Microsoft Flight Simulator. But now you know how dangerous a spin can be, especially if you're flying at a low altitude when it happens. So because of that, in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the important things that you should know about spins and how to prevent them. According to the FAA, a spin is something that can happen to an airplane in an aggravated stall if you mishandle the yaw axis during that stall. Anytime these two things happen, this increases your chance of spinning the airplane, which means that the airplane barrels towards the ground while following this scary corkscrew path. Not a fun time, unless of course you're spinning the airplane on purpose. But anyway, you might be asking yourself, what the heck is an aggravated stall and how on earth could I mishandle the yaw axis? Well, one thing at a time, let's talk about the aggravated stall first. If you remember from the last lesson, one of the things I told you was that when the wings hit their critical angle of attack and the airplane stalls, the wings are still creating some lift, but not enough to overcome the weight of the aircraft. But if the airspeed continues to deteriorate and the angle of attack continues to increase, your wings are going to be producing even less lift. In fact, most airplanes these days are actually designed with a slight twist in each wing so that the wing root is always at a higher angle of attack than the wing tip. This means that your wing root will stall first and you'll lose lift a lot more gradually. So as you can see, this inner part of the wing would be completely stalled while your wing tip out here is still holding up the airplane. But in an aggravated stall, the whole wing becomes stalled and drops like a sack of potatoes. That's why it's so important for you to learn when your airplane is getting close to a stall. This is what we call an impending stall. On Cessna 172s, you'll hear the stall horn, and then on Piper Cherokees, you'll see a stall light. And then on almost all aircraft, you'll get wing buffeting right before the wings drop. This is the reason why one of the first things you're going to learn during your flight training is stall recovery. First, we want you to be able to tell that the airplane is about to stall and keep that from happening. But we also want you to be able to recover the airplane if that stall does occur for one reason or another. But the big thing that's going to make the recovery difficult is if you're mishandling that yaw axis like we talked about a second ago. This simply means that the tail of the aircraft is not aligned with the airplane's direction of travel. What happens when you're driving a car and the back end skids out and the car isn't straight with the direction of travel? Yeah, the car can be difficult to control, can't it? And airplanes are the same way. We need the air to flow over all the control surfaces evenly on both sides so we can control it correctly. That's why you have this guy in your airplane. This is called an inclinometer, and if you can't remember the name of this thing, almost all pilots call this the ball. And if the ball isn't centered when you're out flying around, the tail of your airplane is not aligned with the airplane's direction of travel. Sometimes you'll hear pilots refer to this condition as a slip or a skid, depending on which direction the tail has moved. And if you don't keep that under control, this means that you're mishandling the yaw axis, and this can make the airplane more difficult to control especially when you're moving really slow or if you've stalled the airplane. And that's where things can get really hairy. It's already going to be difficult to control the airplane during a stall, but if wind isn't flowing over the wings evenly, it can be almost impossible to control the aircraft. And that's why your instructor is going to be an absolute pain in the neck during your flight training. He's going to be constantly telling you to look at the ball or step on the ball because he's trying to get you to develop a habit of keeping the nose aligned with the tail at all times. So if you do stall, you don't even have to think about it. Your nose is already going to be aligned. And this is what we're talking about when we say that we want the airplane to be coordinated. The tail is aligned with the airplane's direction of travel. And I know I'm going to catch some heat for this, but I truly believe that it's almost impossible to spin an airplane that is coordinated. Here, I'll show you why I believe that. Take a look at what the Airplane Flying Handbook says. A spin occurs when at least one of the airplane's wings exceed the critical angle of attack or stalls with a side slip or yaw acting on the airplane at or beyond the actual stall. Now, they do go on to say that this yaw is not necessarily caused by using the rudder incorrectly. It also can be caused because you're not accounting for adverse yaw that's caused by the ailerons. That's why it's super important for you to always, always, always fly the aircraft as if the rudder pedals are tied to the ailerons. Unless, of course, you're intentionally trying to slip the aircraft. 
anytime you roll the airplane, you're creating more drag on the wing with the lowered aileron. And this will actually cause the airplane to yaw in the direction of the lowered aileron. This is why it does not matter which wing stalls first, or even if both wings stall at the same time. If your airplane spins, it's going to spin in the direction of the yaw. Let me read you what the Airplane Flying Handbook says. A stall that occurs while the airplane is in a slipping or skidding turn can result in a spin entry and rotation in the direction of the rudder application, regardless of which wingtip is raised. If the pilot does not immediately initiate stall recovery, the airplane may enter a spin. And that raises an important question. What should you do if you think the airplane is about to spin? It hasn't started spinning yet, but the airplane has stalled and one of the wings has dropped. How do you recover? If you said the old PAIR acronym, you're wrong. We have to break the stall first. Always, always, always break the stall first. 99.9% .9 of the time, if you're quick to break the stall, the airplane won't even begin to spin, especially if you're flying a newer aircraft. Newer airplanes are designed so that they're reluctant to spin. And even if you do start to spin, breaking the stall during the incipient phase of the spin is going to allow you to recover the airplane in most cases. In fact, I've intentionally spun airplanes quite a few times during training, and this is one of the first things you'll notice when you start practicing spins. If you don't let the airplane get completely into the spin cycle, breaking the stall will recover the aircraft 9 times out of 10. This is one of the reasons why you aren't even required to take spin training when you get your private pilot certificate. You don't really need it. So always break the stall first, and then if that doesn't work, then you can use the old PAIR acronym. Now, keep in mind, every airplane is different, so it's extremely important that you know the specific spin recovery procedures for the aircraft that you're going to be flying. But as a general rule, the PAIR acronym works for almost all training airplanes out there. I like to use P-PAIR because the first step should always be pushing the nose forward to break the stall like I just mentioned. But if that doesn't work, then you can go power idle, ailerons and elevator neutral, rudder opposite until the spinning stops, and then elevator up to bring the airplane back up to level flight. Once again, this is going to work for most airplanes out there, but be sure to check your POH. You never know when you might be flying an airplane that has slightly different procedures. And there are no do-overs, so it's important to do the right thing the first time. Now, the FAA is going to try to trick you on the test. And one of the questions you could possibly see seems to contradict the airplane flying handbook. Let me show you this really quick so you don't miss this one on the test. If an airplane spins to the right, which wing or wings have stalled? Now once again, the airplane flying handbook says that one or both wings can be stalled in order for a spin to occur. But the direction of the spin depends on which direction the aircraft is yawed. Because of that, there seems to be no correct answers to this question. But the most correct answer is that both wings have stalled. And here's why. First of all, it doesn't matter which wing has stalled. The airplane can enter the spin in either direction. So the left and right wings only are obviously the incorrect answer. But remember what I said earlier. The wings of our training aircraft are twisted so that the wing roots are going to stall before the rest of the wing. So if one wing stalls, there is a 99.9% .9 chance that the wing root on the other wing is stalled as well. So that's what they're talking about when they're saying that both wings are stalled. And that's part of what causes the rotation during a spin. Both wings are stalled during the actual spin, but one wing is creating a little bit more lift than the other. Remember, a stalled wing is still producing some lift. It's just not enough to hold up the airplane. I know, this is a really dumb question, but I hope that this explanation will help you get it right when you take the official FAA written exam. And that's everything you need to know about spins. In the next lesson, we're going to be talking about controllability. And when you're ready to continue with your training, you can watch that video right here. But before you do that, be sure to take the free quiz for today's lesson. You'll find the link to that in the description of this video. And by the way, if you need an endorsement for the written exam, you can get my premium version of this ground course for only 50 bucks at freepilottraining.net. And that training includes the endorsement and also a bunch more quizzes and tests. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you.